Welcome back to The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Now let's go to Off the Press, where we have a review of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria this morning. I am going to be starting with the daily independent newspapers. And of course, uh, we'll be saying good morning to G.D. Johnson uh, right after sharing these uh, stories. On the daily independent this morning, big one there. It's talking about the economy. It says Nigeria's economic recovery slows as GDP drops by 0.98%. Amosu, Tinubu, others shine at independent parliamentary awards. Bandits get round telecoms shutdown. Use walkie-talkies, says the Katsina State Government. So once again, the bandits get around telecoms shutdown. Use walkie-talkies. Asu shelves strike as Bajabia Miller intervenes. Buhari signs climate change. Amcon amendment bills into law. And Buhari in favor of direct primaries, says Bajabia Miller. Um, we are waiting on states for NSAS reports, Buhari tells Anthony Blinken. And impunity is Nigeria's greatest problem, says PDP governors. NSAS reporting circulation may not be authentic, says a Lagos panel member. And also poor visibility may disrupt flight operations, NIMET warns. Those are the stories on the Daily Independent. All right, let's uh, move away from the Daily Independent and check out the leadership newspaper this morning. And uh, the board caption reads, after three positive growths, Nigeria's GDP slows to 4.03%. <laughs> Federal government blames impact of COVID-19 and dismisses looming food crisis. Experts proffer solutions, say strong growth required. No going back on direct primaries. Uh, you also have a, another caption, but Abia Miller is quoted on that. And Nigerian loses 30 million naira daily as real workers down tools. And the federal government to pay ASU 12.17 billion naira end allowances. Uh, President Mohammed Buhari to the United States. We will act after hashtag answers reports from states. Quite interesting, but that's so much we can take on the leadership newspaper this morning. To the Daily Sun, fears in Bayelsa over gas leak. Kanu alleges inhuman treatment in detention. And bandits now use radio frequency walkie-talkie. The victim narrates a 29-day ordeal with kidnappers in Niger State. Also, NSAS report, I'm waiting for Son Wolu and other governors, says President Buhari. Commuters stranded as railway workers shut down train services nationwide. And also Sokoto killing death toll hits 43. Bill to move CCT from executive to judiciary arm passes second reading. And we can also find here, Wari signs climate change and AMCOM bills into law. The federal government excited over delisting Nigeria from religious violators records. And I think those are the stories that we can take on the Daily Sun. All right, moving away from the Daily Sun, we have the Daily Trust newspaper this morning, and the board caption reads, Train passengers stranded. NRC loses millions as unions strike. Traveling to Kaduna from Abuja by road, risky. Tough times for intra-city commuters and Lagos were engaging union management. Uh, this is a ride as you find under the board caption this morning. Pandev wants IPOP against territorial conquest move. And you also have MPA exceeds revenue target and remits over 89.9 billion naira. And uh, still looking at the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper, I am waiting answers reports from state. Buhari tells the United States again conquesto and Wally feuds force PDP to postpone Northwest Congress. Nigeria, U.S. signed $2.17 billion deal on education, health, and orders. And talking about the strike, ASU federal government reached trance as Bajabia Mila intervenes. Uh, this are some of the stories on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Uh, good morning, G.D. Johnson. And good morning to our viewers all over the world. It's a pleasure to be with you Okay, so, so let's start off with the, um, the strike by the railway workers. What are your thoughts? I mean, we're losing a lot of money, 30 million naira, and the last time they had a review of salary was about 1983. They're earning 30,000 naira after 30,000 naira for workers, and this is after, this is up before deduction, so they're left with like 26,000 naira. Let's share your thoughts on that. Well, um, 
if you are familiar with the railway system, because I live very close to the railway station, and my second school was very, my primary and secondary school was close to the railway station, and I commute with the railway to go to school where I was in the university when I didn't want to go to other means of transportation. You'll be, you'll be familiar with the condition of railway workers, um, the palpable conditions with which they live in. We invested in infrastructure, but we don't. We, we have not made serious investment in human resources, and that has been the problem of the railway workers over the years. And we thought that with federal government getting loans left, right, and center, and investment made in infrastructure of railway service across the nation, the welfare package of the human resource that will manage this infrastructure will be looked into. But here we are today. It is still the same since 1983 when their issues have been. So I think government needs to look into that direction. If you have a beautiful house and you give it to pigs to manage, they will destroy the house, they will destroy everything. Now, if you have good infrastructure, you have good policies, and the people that are managing it, you don't take care of their welfare. It's just a matter of time. The, 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 the business will collapse, and that's what's basically affecting the railway system. And that's what destroyed the railway system in the first instance in, in Nigeria. And I think we shouldn't even go that path. That path, again, there's a need for government to look into it. There's a need for the Minister of Labor and Productivity to ensure that all of these sectors that are going on strike, what are the facts? Can we, can we resolve issues before it gets to the public domain of calling for a strike action? There are various unions and there are various levels of negotiations and there are various levels of leadership that should address this particular issue before we get to okay, the down truths and you have a lot of commuters being stranded, resources being wasted, families not being connected as a result of this, this strike. So I think government should look in this direction. We must not get to this stage and this phase before it's started. The welfare of your workers are, are, are very, very paramount. If you link that story to the story of ASU, and the speaker intervened in order for ASU not to go on strike, and sang to the Senior Staff Association of Universities and Tertiary Institutions in Nigeria, it's the same thing in doctors to cover strike. What is the Ministry of Urban Productivity and all of its agencies, what are they doing to ensure that we have um, a better working conditions for people working for government, as well as a better labor and labor management relationship that we don't have to resort to strike. The speaker does not have to intervene. What has the speaker got to do with them intervening with, with issues that has to do with strike? The education ministry is there. There are other agencies that will look into this, whatever agreement that federal government signs with us, so that we don't have to strike and strike and strike and strike and strike and strike. I recall when we discussed this issue of strike, I said this will not be the last strike. While I was in school, ASU went on strike. Before um, I was born, ASU went on strike. So they've been going on strike. And we asked these questions. What are the basis for ASU going on strike? We really need to federalize our educational system. When you federalize your educational system, then each state will, um, each state will compete for resources among themselves. And the university should, if the universities that are providing labor for the economy, cannot be self-sufficient, cannot generate revenue to sustain themselves, then what type of labor are they providing for the, for the country? So when they have to rely on government funding, there's no doubt government should fund, but to a certain degree, once you have funded the university education to a, to a certain level, those universities with the kind of resources, the intellect, the knowledge, and the expertise they have in their business administration, in their engineering department, in all of the faculties which they have in their medical school, should be able to generate revenue to sustain themselves. And each school should pay based on the environment uh, where, where, where they are. Because I don't believe in investing in Lagos, should, professor in Lagos should be handing the same, the same salary, for example, and the same allowances for a, for a university professor in Oyekiti. Let me just limit it to Southwest. In Oyekiti, why should they hand? The condition of living is varies, varies. And so, based on the peculiarities of each situation, each until we do that, we still be having strike here, yeah, strike there, and we have truncated academic activities, and then we have our big, our big graduates that are produced across, but our big engineers, our big doctors, our big journalists, 
have big everywhere because you shorten the academic calendar. You try to meet up because people have gone on strike. It's only in Nigeria that I see people go on strike in academic institutions. I don't see people going on strike in academic anywhere else in the world. It's pathetic. All right. Um, I remember also the interview that we had with the, uh, I think the head of the Railway Workers Union. Um, you know, and he, he explained further about the working conditions uh, for these railway workers. They didn't have you know, proper accommodation, you know, at their uh, terminals where they where the train stopped. They they also um, didn't even have spare parts, you know. So a couple of the trains were, you know, had broken down. Some of the trains that Goodluck yeah. Jonathan had all purchased, some of the trains that Osama Osama had purchased. I told you, I live, I live in Iju, and yeah. Iju is Iju Station. I am very, very familiar with the railway system. I am very, all you, all you just need to do is to take, to take on the railway system, we wrote to the, for example, we wrote to the minister and to the president concerning not providing a railway station for a flagship community that was named. So I know about railway, I knew people that have worked in the railway system. Just come, just go to their terminal and see whether they have a changing room, whether they have bathroom. I can, after this show, I can go and take live, live, live images for you, for you to see. So I know what I'm talking about, whether they have a changing room, whether they have toilet facilities, whether they have, all of those, they are there. Whether they have places where they could even bury their head, it is it's clear. The the resources that have been expended on these things compared to what they have is is is, 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 is um, or you go to and then don't don't forget that um, my grandfather my grandfather worked in the railway system. Are you getting my point? He was he he he, he was he was a coach driver. So in the Plymouth, so all this. Just look at the average. We pay for railway system. Emphasis has always been on the infrastructure and less emphasis on the welfare of the workers. All right. That's it. All right. Let's see. On the uh, Daily Sun, uh, I think the story is also repeated on the Daily Independent, but it says here bandits now use radio frequency walkie talkie. Um, of course, as a victim narrates a 29 day ordeal. If you remember also, there was a time when. Uh, telecom services were shut down in Katsina and uh, on other states. Um, but of course, now they are saying the bandits use walkie-talkies. Now, if bandits use walkie-talkie, can't that not? Well, that's the reason why you want to narrow their options. And they are now using frequencies. Frequencies of walkie-talkie. That means that you can intercept if you have good intelligence. You can intercept, you can intercept that frequency and gather your own intelligence. So that's not an excuse for the security agency. In actual sense, this is a good development that the security agency could tap into in order to forestall the nefarious activities and the criminal activities of these of this terrorist elements that you call bandits, but that I term to be terrorists because they are terrorizing the lives and property of Nigeria. So, so using walkie-talkie shouldn't be an excuse. In fact, it plays into the hands of the intelligence agencies, the spectre agencies, to infiltrate their camps because they'll be using frequency. And once you can tap into that frequency, you gather the intelligence you need, you need, you need, you need to gather. We don't need for, for a victim to come and to tell us that, oh, this is these are our experiences. In what way have the security agencies tried to infiltrate this camp by planting their agents to be kidnapped? their own agents to be kidnapped by by these terrorists that mm, we refer to as bandits and then you infiltrate their camps to gather intelligence and then smoke them out out of the nation but it is what it is we will be listening to and then we justify the money that has been expended on security and fighting terrorists and fighting and fighting Fighting Boko Haram and all other non-state actors that are perpetrating violence on on, on, on the Nigerian Nigerian nation and the Nigerian space. So it's um. It's, Let's talk about the Nigerian economy now. Uh, looking at the Daily Independent newspaper, it says Nigeria's economic recovery slows as GDP drops by 0.98 percent. 
and on the leadership is, is about the same thing. After three positive growths, Niger's GDP slows to 4.03%. Let's share your thoughts on that. Well, there are two things I want you to look at. When you look at, they are talking about uh, economic growth, gross domestic products, the overall growth of the nation, looking at it from economic, it drops by 0.9%. That's um, from economic point of view, but from, but from the human interest point of view, what is the cost of living? What is the standard of living in, in Nigeria? If you look at those indicators, it will tell you if they are using the, the GDP as an index to measure the performance of the economy under this particular administration, and that it has dropped by 0.9%. Uh, the growth does not reflect in the cost of living and in the standard of living of an average Nigerian. Nigerians are growing. Nigerians are growing. You and I, and people like for people like you and I that are working, that people who are working, we know the number of calls and we know the number of text messages we receive from people to ask us for one form of help or the other. So when they come around and they talk about this um, economic index using the gross domestic product, which is the total um, um, economic activities of all all people domicile in Nigeria, um, what the economic activity that takes place in Nigeria, then you understand that that is not the factor that I look at from. I look at it from the perspective of the cost of living and the standard of living. Then if, it, if this GDP has dropped by 0.9%, the cost of living and the standard of living has dropped by 50%. All you just need to do is to look at commodity price index. Just go to the market and look at the commodity price index and look at the standard, um, what Nigerians are set for in order for them to have a means of livelihood. Then you know that this 0.9% does not actually reflect what is on the ground that Nigerians are going through. The, inflations, the inflation is high. The, the, the price of commodities have gone up, the price of goods and services are, have skyrocketed and have, the, the, the salary and the wages of Nigerians have not been increased to meet up with the challenges of, of this um, slow economic growth that has a more severe and direct impact on their standard and cost of living. All right. Um Judy Johnson, now let's talk about something, you know, that has also made headlines in the last couple of days, and that is the NSAS uh, report. It's on the Daily Independent this morning. It says, we are waiting on states for NSAS report. Buhari tells Anthony Blinken. I think it's also on the Daily Sun. Yes, I'm waiting for Son Wolu and other governors, and that's also with the NSAS report. Get, let's uh, get your thoughts on that one. Um, what exactly well, is the um, president waiting for? Well, should, well, how many how many hours would it be when there was a, when there was that gas exclusion in Lagos? Someone went to Abuja to show Buhari picture. It didn't take him ages for him to go to Abuja to to show him pictures. And then what protocols are you putting in place to send a report? The panel in Lagos has forwarded their report to the governor. I think that report there are various means which you could get a report electronic means. Digital technology has made life easier. It has broken the distance between time and space, so you could you could get anything to anybody within within split within split second. Why would the president? It's an embarrassment for the president to tell the Secretary of State of the United States and to believe in that, and um, we are waiting for the governor. Waiting for the governor concerning the world. I think a phone call from the governors will, and a dispatch from the governors we will get this to to. To, to, to the president, but it's, 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 it's clear, it's clear that spotlight is on this particular matter, and that if it's one of the issues that was discussed with the state, with the, with the Secretary of State of the United States, it means that there is, this particular matter is not going anywhere. And I said it over time, 
that people should forget that people should not forget that they are in government for a limited period of time. Nobody be in government forever and ever. And you'll be held accountable for whatever happened under your stewardship when you're in government. So it's just a matter of time. If the report is clear and there is a crime that is committed against against humanity in terms of um, genocide or massacre or whatever, you pay the price. It's just you pay the price. You see, you pay the price. There's nothing stopping anybody appearing before the international court of justice for crime against humanity. So we live in a global society, we live in a global community that if you are given the responsibility of managing the state resources, you'll be held accountable in office after you left office when you don't have any any immunity, any immunity again. So it's good that this particular issue was was an issue that the state, it means that the global community are interested in what happened um, in that NSAS protest. And all those that engage in self-denial and self-deception and self-delusion that thought that will not actually happen in Lekki, well, it's becoming clearer and clearer by the day and that um, um, this report, when it comes out, when it comes into the public domain, we see what government will do. But I'm sure that there are people that are waiting to take this matter to the international international court, international judicial system, um, so that those that are involved, those that have various levels of command, that this thing happened under them, will be held accountable. It's, it's just it's just a matter of time. Yeah, but but you know, do we still have faith in the ICC and also in Anthony Blinken? Because um, a lot of people have also mentioned that the the United States or or any other country in the West really doesn't have that much interest in actual justice. Uh, for in, in, in situations like this, you know, they would always, of course, lean towards where their interests lie. And the ICC also, over, over time, has not shown to be itself to be um, a court that people have a lot of faith in. Now, it's a burden on the international community either to open their eyes, to watch um, the, 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 the degradation and um, the the, the closing of the democratic space is, 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 is there for them to, to, to look. No nation exists in isolation again. Well, the ICC um, might, over the last few years, been a bit in a state of comatose, but that does not foreclose the fact that some, some strides have been taken, even though we have not taken giant steps with respect, with respect, with respect to that. But if we have to wait for United States, I think we are missing it. You can solve your own problem mentally. That's where the issue of um, the, the the organized civil society um, comes into focus. There are big, my own industry and your own industry comes into focus. There are some media organizations that are engaged in self denial that in natural sense people are killed or people are not killed. When we are talking about real, I told you after this event, after this encounter, I can go to the railway station and then take pictures and send it for anybody that cares to see it. So it's, it's clear for us not to wait for America to solve our problem. It is important for us as the media to bring it to the, to the spotlight, things that are wrong with the society. So we, if we wait for America, well, their interest, they will always pursue their interest. That is enlightening self-interest when it comes to international community and international relations. However, if we bring this issue into the spotlight, regularly as the watchdog and the custodian of what is right in the society. I'm sure the international community will be embarrassed and they will be forced to do something to do something about 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 this this issue. But internally, what are we doing? What steps are we taking? The agencies that you hold government accountable, what are we doing to hold government accountable? And what are we doing to draw spotlights to this particular issue? Over that matter, and the president said and Twitter is banned in Nigeria. And Twitter is banned in Nigeria. Yet on October 1st, the president made the pronouncement that the ban has been lifted. Nothing has been done to that to that effect. And the question I asked, and I did ask my students this question in the exam, and that I asked them to write their Twitter handle, and they told me that federal government has banned Twitter. I said, federal government, as a journalist, the thing is, you know, the lawyers call themselves the the, the, the learned one. I say as a journalist, you are the learned, you are the intelligent one and the knowledgeable one. Now, you are the, I say that again. A journalist is 
the intelligent one and the knowledgeable one. Because the journalist must have a knowledge of it. I said, does the president have the power to ban Twitter, to stifle freedom of expression? Does he have that power? I said, my knowledge and understanding to my intelligence, he does not have the power. He's not within the body of his power to ban, to ban, to ban Twitter. So it's our own responsibility to enlighten the people, to bring this issue into the public domain, to let them know that actually this happened. So we are holding government accountable as the watchdog, not the lap dog, not the pet dog, not the power dog of authorities. Yeah, but doesn't it make and it harder? Doesn't it make it harder um, that, you know, like you've mentioned, you know, the systems that should checkmate and should put these people in check, you know, those systems really aren't in place or they aren't functional. And doesn't it make it and harder? Because, think... because there have been, and uh, sorry, it was J.D. Johnson, there have been um, investigative reports carried out by the media, um, by the Premium Times and the likes, even CNN, you know, yeah, and that was countered here and there. But doesn't it make it harder that you're dealing with a government that denies every single drop of evidence that is put in, in front of it? Um, and and, and that, that, so no matter what the media does, they're going to deny it. That's why, we, that's, why, that's why we need to do more. We keep doing what we need to do in order to put this issue in the front, in the front, in the front burner. Uh, to put this issue in the front burner. So when we do... When we, 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 we just can't take our eyes off the ball. You see, when it's just unfortunate, when governments, the, 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 the ultimate call of a journalist is being patriotic. And patriotism is not patriotic, patriotism to one party or one interest or section. It's to your nation, your nation first, not party, not whatever. When we, the emergence of autocratic and despotic government it is the media that draw attentions to it and so that that frankenstein that frankenstein monster does not grow up out of the society and we saw the emergence of how government becomes authoritarian in their in, the, in their posture and in their disposition and that's why we have found ourselves i agree with you we have done so much but we still need to do more we can we cannot be tired of doing what is our assignment and what is our responsibility in holding government, in holding government, in holding government um, account, accountable. I agree with you. We have done, we have, we have done, we have done much, but we still need to do more. Mm -hmm. And we can't get tired of holding them, of holding them accountable with respect, with respect to to government living up to its responsibility and not to patronize, to patronize. Let me link that story. All right, GD Johnson. Independent award. Now, let me just give me a minute. Okay. Now, let me link that story to Independent Award. Uh, where, why should media organizations be doing award? And the winners of those awards are government officials. It's not Independent Award. Amosu did not wish signs in Independent Award. What has Amosu done in the last three years? And what has Tinumbu done? In the, I want to be clear. Is it the social space? Is it the economic space? Is it the political space? Now you will give award to people that are elected and entrusted with public service to do something. Osarubi and Messi, is there any, are, are there anybody in that studio or watching clapping for you for doing this job? I'm asking you. No, not at all. Now you will reward people that are elected to serve the public with what has the watchdog got to do? When does the watchdog become the watchdog? It's insulting for media organization to organize award and to be giving awards to governors and the rest of it. And all of them does it, particularly the print media organization. And that's what has led to the state of comatose and the death of the print media in Nigeria. And let them continue with that rubbish and that nonsense. And we still will get them to. So, okay. Messi, please forgive me for, 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 for interrupting you. I'm waiting for you now. So that you have mercy on me. All right. So let's quickly share your thoughts on um, no going back on direct primaries. Uh, Femi Bajabi Amila has said that. And uh, the fact that a lot of persons are still very worried and concerned that maybe the governors of the APC might prevail on the president not to assent to that bill because it concerns, I mean, the issue of 
direct primaries as part of the proposed bill? They are wasting their time. That bill, if the president signs into law, cannot stand, cannot stand the test of time, the court will throw it out. The National Assembly cannot make laws for political parties. They can make laws on how political parties will run their system. Don't forget that before these parties were registered, they submitted their constitution to the Independent National Electoral Commission. Now, how a party will select its candidate is not a responsibility of the National Assembly, it's a responsibility of the internal organ of that party as stated in its own constitution. These guys are engaged in the exercise of futility. And some of them have put this into focus because they want to engage in survival mode. Some of them are looking for means to perpetuate themselves in power. It should not be the concern of the National Assembly. Our party picks and selects their kind. Look, let me tell you, even where they said they Hello? We can hear you. Let's go even where in, 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 in Anambra State, let me give you a test case. In Anambra State, they said they had a direct primary in APC, I mean. Now, when they had the direct primary in APC, we saw the total number of votes that um, uh, anti Uba pulled to win the APC primaries. He did not poll up to, in the main election. He, he did not poll up to 40%, no, 20, 30% of the, of, the, of the result of the direct primaries they had in APC. It means that majority of APC members that voted for him during their primaries did not vote for him during their during the election. These people are not serious. They don't even know why they are in the National Assembly Defense System. Instead of making legislation for the good, for the good and betterment of the Nigerian society, they are making laws for primaries. And it that's the reason why the speaker is going to visit, is going to visit the 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 president. Oh my god, waste of state resources, waste of state time, and waste of we, we, I don't know. Waste of energy. Let them pass the bill. The bill. You think the party will, will recognize that? The party have, have their own constitution and the constitution states how they will conduct themselves. That's why they were registered by NN. And that responsibility does not fall with them. All right. Well, I think we can uh, end the conversation here. Judy Johnson, thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning and for sharing your thoughts with oh, us on these very big stories. Oh, sorry, thank you very much. And mercy, thank you for having mercy on me for interjecting you. And I hope God right. will not have mercy on all of these people that have put us in this mess in this country. I hope not. Have a right. wonderful Friday. You too. All right, thank you. All right. Stay with us. Uh, of course, uh, we'll now move straight to uh, Today in History and share with you uh, something huge that happened on this day many years ago. We'll be back.